Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I recently bought this new sweater and I think it suits me pretty well. If you do think so too, um, leave a pray for Jens emoji in the comments. Pray for me. <sighs> Just like with the head at the beginning of my channel. Once again we are back at this bad boy right here. And we want to solve it using the Leibniz rule for integration this time. That means some people like to call it Feynman integration. We are going to do differentiation under the integral side. It's going to be a fun ride. So at first we want to introduce a new integral. So we let some i in terms of t equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the cosine of t times x over x squared plus 1 dx. How are those the same? Well, if we let t equal to 1, we end up with the original integral, so that's quite nice. And like I said, we want to differentiate that. So at first, i prime in terms of t, and we are differentiating it in terms of t. I hope that's clear to you guys. It's nothing else then. Okay, the upper and lower bounds aren't dependent of of t, that means we can use the special case of Leibniz rule for integration and interchange the differential and the integral sign and turn it into a partial derivative. So we now have the integral from minus infinity to infinity, to infinity of the partial derivative in terms of t of the cosine t times x over x squared plus 1 dx. Nice and fine. We want to differentiate the function that's in terms of t in here. Well, what is the function that's in terms of t? This right here, the cosine, and we are going to end up with minus the sine something. So this is now the integral from minus infinity to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1. And this differentiated just gives us minus x times the sine t times x dx. We can bring this minus to the outside and now we want to do some algebraic manipulation. So this right here, I hope you agree with me that we can multiply numerator and denominator by a 1 and it won't change anything. That means we are going to multiply this fraction by x over x. So at first bring a minus to the outside and now we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared over x times x squared plus 1 times the sine t times x. Why am I leaving such a space? Well, we can say this is multiplicative because there's a multiplication sign right here. And also it wouldn't hurt us if we would add a 1 and subtract it once again. So if we add a 0 to this, that won't change anything. So positive 1 and minus 1 in this case. Okay, and now we can, just like I said before, do some algebraic manipulation. That means we can distribute the sine t times x into this minus 1 and also into this other factor x squared plus 1. And then we can use the linearity of the integral to split it up. So. What does that mean in conclusion? We now have the negative integral from minus infinity to infinity of. So the first term is x squared plus 1 times the sine t times x over x times x squared plus 1 dx. And also we have another integral. I'm going to put it here. Positive because negative and negative becomes positive of the integral, the improper one of sine t times x over x times x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, great. You might notice something. This and that we cancel out. And this right here is just the negative Dirichlet integral. If you don't know what I'm talking about, link, link to all those videos will be in the description. So that means this integral right here is just going to evaluate 2 pi in this case here. Yeah. It's from minus infinity to infinity, so it's pi, but we have a negative sign, so this is minus pi. Okay, nice. And we also have this right here. And to work with this, we are going to differentiate this whole i prime in terms of t a second time to get to i double prime in terms of t. So what would that look like? Now we have i double prime in terms of t, which is, if we differentiate minus pi in terms of t, it's just a constant that would vanish. It's just going to be zero. And now the upper and lower bounds of this integral are independent of t, that means special rule of the Leibniz rule for integration, special case, and we can interchange it, turning it into a partial derivative. So the second derivative of this function is just the integral from minus infinity to infinity of del t sine 
t times x over x, x squared plus 1 dx. Just like before, differentiating everything leaves us with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times the cosine t times x over x, x squared plus 1 dx. This and that will cancel out and you might notice something spectacular. This right here, this integral is just our original i in terms of t. So we can conclude that the second derivative in terms of time, or t in this case, of i in terms of t is just i in terms of t. That's a differential equation. And we can actually solve this. Let's bring this i in terms of t to the other side. So that's equivalent to saying we have i double prime in terms of t minus i in terms of t is just going to be zero. And that's just the second order linear, homogeneous, ordinary, whatsoever differential equation. And we are going to solve it not using Laplace transforms. This time we are going to solve it using an exponential approach, an Ansatz in German. So at first we are going to say, or we are going to assume that our i in terms of t is nothing else than some constant times e to the lambda t. So that's what we are going to assume if we differentiate that two times i double prime of t is then going to be equal to, okay, so we have uh, lambda squared c times e to the lambda t. And we can plug this ansatz in. That now means we have c lambda squared e to the lambda t minus c times e to the lambda t is going to be zero, but what is that? Well, we can factor out c times e to the lambda t. So that's c times e to the lambda t lambda squared minus one. And this is going to be zero. Without any restrictions, we are going to assume that this constant isn't going to be zero. That means this right here is needed to be zero. So that means we can conclude that lambda squared minus one has to be zero. Well, we can solve for that. That also means that we have two solutions for lambda, lambda one and two, is now plus minus the square root of one, which is just one. Okay, and now we can, oh no. <laughs> And now we can plug this into an auxiliary equation. That means we have some general solution for this differential equation. That means i in terms of t in general is constructed out of some constants, the sum of two terms of this case right here, the first order one, and also with the solutions for lambda, the roots. So we have some c1 e to the lambda 1 t, which is just going to be one times t, and also positive c2 e to the minus t. That's the second solution for lambda minus one. Great. That's going to be the general solution for our problem. And well, now we can find some initial conditions, but at first let's differentiate that. That means i prime in terms of t is nothing else. Well, the first term is going to stay as it is, and the second term is going to get a minus. So minus c2 e to the minus t. What are our initial conditions? So at first we could um, let t equal to zero at i in terms of t, because we are working with this. Well, that would mean we would get, well, cosine of zero is just one, so we get the integral from minus infinity to infinity of dx over x squared plus one. This is just going to be the inverse tangent from minus infinity to infinity. So let's put this here somewhere. Okay, so we have i in terms of t equals to zero. It's just going to give us the integral from minus infinity to infinity of dx over x squared plus one. This is just going to be the inverse tangent of x from minus infinity to infinity. Well, the upper bound is just going to be pi over two and minus becomes positive later on. So uh, inverse tangent of minus infinity is minus pi over two. Minus and minus becomes positive pi over two plus pi over two is just going to give us pi. So that's the first condition. So we have pi. And what would happen if we would plug, because we have i prime in terms of t, if you would plug in a zero into here? Well, this function right here, this integrand would become zero because we have sine of zero, this is just zero. So we only have this minus pi left. So we know that i prime at t equals to zero is nothing else than minus pi. We can make use of that. Let's plug this in. So that now means we have 
i of zero is nothing else than pi. And if we plug a zero into here and here, this would just give us c1 plus c2. Okay, nice. And also i prime in terms of zero is nothing else than minus pi. Well, and if we plug this into here, we have c1 minus c2. We can now multiply both sides by minus 1 down here because it's not equal to 0. So that means pi is equal to minus c1 plus c2. And now we have just a system of equations, which is pretty easy to solve because you see this will only hold if c1 is going to be 0. c1 needs to be 0 and this will leave us with c2 equals to pi. Okay, great. So we now know that i in terms of t is nothing else. So if this is zero, this first term will vanish. So we have pi times e to the minus t. That's the solution to our differential equation. But remember, we want to go back to our original i. But what was i? i is just i in terms of t at the point t equals to one. So that means, let's put the final conclusion here in this box i is nothing else than i at t equals to 1, but when t equals to 1, we end up with pi times e to the minus 1, which is just pi over e and another box, and then we are done. So that's the second method. I guess that was a bit faster than the first method using Laplace transforms. It's quite fun doing it that way, turning some integrals into differential equations. I just love this technique. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, take a look, a look into the description. There will be a link to my corresponding video. I'm making all the stuff for free, so if you want to support me a bit more, I would highly appreciate it. And well, up until the next video, have a day. See ya.